In Warframe, players can customize their own unique companions using components they find in the game. At Vulpin Props, we have four weeks and the combined skills of seven artists to bring our MOA companion to life. Our MOA starts with a 3D model created at Wooden Leg Studios using ZBrush. This model needs to be split up into individual pieces, each small enough to fit inside a 3D printer. We're using 11 3D printers to create our MOA parts as quickly as possible. Even with 11 printers, it'll take around 12 days in total to print all the MOA pieces. It's important to strategize the order of printing. As soon as parts come off the printers, they need to be cleaned up and detailed. First, we remove any excess filament. Then we fix any imperfections using Bondo. Some of the pieces are small, hollow, and delicate. We're mixing up resin and filling in these little pieces to reinforce them. Other MOA parts are so big that we have to print them out in multiple pieces and combine them using epoxy and our own technique, ABS welding. Gluing parts together with hot ABS not only covers up the seam lines, but it will help these combined parts maintain their shape over time. Next is one of the most time-consuming parts, sanding. The sanding stage is where we establish our level of detail. We want this to look amazing up close. Our MOA should look like a real robot created in a futuristic factory. This means that we need to hide any evidence that it was made by real people. We need to hide the 3D print lines, Bondo, ABS welded seams, everything. All of these parts need to be primed. Primer helps protect the surface of the parts, and it also gives the paint something to bite into. Some of the MOA pieces will be primed individually, and others will be primed as one big section. This build has so many pieces, it's imperative that we stay organized. This is like putting together a big 3D puzzle. We don't want to lose anything or accidentally spend time working on duplicate pieces. So we have a guideline to make sure that we keep every piece labeled and stored properly. We also printed out a one-to-one -one scale image of the MOA for reference. If we're not sure how a piece fits, we can match it up with a life-size print. This proved so useful that we printed out a full-size image of the MOA's skeleton as well. The MOA's skeleton is a steel frame that provides support and a central connecting point for all the different sections of our MOA. We're using a tube notcher and a multi-cutter saw to cut steel pipes, then fusing them together with a MIG welder. According to our cameraman, this is the most exciting part of the project. If our measurements here aren't exact, then our MOA pieces won't fit together. Harrison's trying a new experiment. He 3D printed a guide to help weld these pipes at exact angles. Thankfully, his hunch paid off and the plastic guide didn't erupt in a molten fireball. Coming up with new techniques like this is all a part of prop making. Our MOA is going to feature LED lighting, so before we go any further, we need to run some wires through our frame. That way, we'll be ready for the lighting stage later on. Now that we have a standing frame, we can start assembling the MOA's brackets, which is a fancy way of saying legs. Precision is crucial. If one piece is off, it could affect every other piece. We're making little refinements as we go to ensure the best possible fit. In Warframe, players can customize four sections of their MOA companion, the bracket, the core, the gyro, and the model. Before we can mount the core or the gyro to the frame, we have to prepare each section for lighting. That means drilling holes through each section and running wires, then soldering lights together and making sure they fit in their sockets. Our MOA features nearly 70 LED lights. Now that all the parts are complete, it's time to paint the MOA. We start with a black base coat. This will ensure that the rest of the paint will look even across all sections. We're using urethane paint, which looks great and dries quickly. In order to save time, we're mixing paint with clear urethane to get a glossy finish. We're also using an expensive chrome paint, which contains super fine metal particles. The MOA has a lot of small details. In order to get each bit the right color, we need to tape mask each section before painting. Now it's time to assemble all the painted parts. We attach the MOA's joints and armor plates. The core, the gyro, and the model are attached with careful consideration for the electrical wires. The MOA is fully assembled, but it doesn't look real. We need to add some wear and tear, like scratches and grime. We weather the surface using acrylic paints and an airbrush. Then we dab the acrylic paint with alcohol to give the weathering a more messy, natural look. We've been using a temporary stand to keep our MOA upright, but we have something special for this display. A 30-pound steel disc with the Warframe logo carved into it using high-pressure water jets. 
In order to give this stand a nice finish, we're using an angle grinder with a flap wheel attachment to create a circular brushed steel pattern. After weeks of printing, sanding, welding, wiring, and painting, our MOA is finally finished. This project took four weeks and seven artists to complete. Our robot companion stands five feet tall. We ran over 9,000 grams of ABS filament through our 3D printers. That's more than a kilometer of plastic filament. Since our MOA is pretty big, we need to build a custom shipping container to keep it safe. Our MOA will debut at TennoCon, the official convention for Warframe. It's hard to say goodbye to our newest creation, but we hope fans will enjoy seeing a Warframe companion in real life.